There's nothing more important in training than teaching your dog to stay. Today I'm going to cover that as well as three vital dimensions to your training you must understand to teach your dog almost everything. Click thumbs up for Bruno the puppy and click subscribe if you're new if you want to learn everything I know about dog training. Hey, it's free. And pick up a copy of my book, Dog Training Revolution. You can also download the audio version too. Today Bruno and I are going to cover the critical three D's of dog training. In fact, I'm willing to say if you understand these three concepts, and you will, you're going to be well on your way to having a perfectly behaved dog. Speaking of stay, did you know you can stay home, stay out of traffic, and stay with your dog instead of rushing to the pet supply store just to get dog food? Why should any of us have to stop what we're doing to do a time-consuming, unnecessary chore if we don't have to. Here's how it works. Just go to PetFlow, choose your puppy's favorite food, and how often you want it delivered. I'll have a special link and a coupon code in the description that'll give you 20% off of your first order. So let's discuss what we dog trainers refer to as the three D's in dog training. The first one, having your dog focus on you for a period of time, duration. Next, teaching your dog to listen to you a bit farther away, distance. And finally, teaching your dog, ouch, to listen to you in a more exciting situation or around distractions. That's the third D. Today I'm gonna to try and illustrate all three of these concepts by showing you how to teach your dog to stay. The three Ds, duration, distance, and distraction, aren't just for teaching your dog to stay though. They come in handy for a variety of different things, whether that's stay, come, play dead, or speak. But stay is a potentially life-saving skill that you should work on early and often with your dog in their first year of training, regardless of age. When teaching your dog anything, it's always a good idea to break things down into smaller steps. Not only will your dog learn more quickly, but it's just easier that way. Essentially what this means is only requiring your dog's attention for very short bursts of time, at least at the beginning. Let me show you what I mean. Stay, one, two, yes, good job. Okay, get up, come on, over here, good job. Nice work. So that happened really fast, didn't it? What we got was a two second stay, and then I released Bruno from the stay to just be very clear about my communication that hey, that stay is over. It's almost as if you're trying to catch your dog staying. You wanna take advantage of those opportunities to let them know that you like what they're doing at that moment. Sit, stay, one, two, three, yes. Good job, you're doing terrific. At first, get really good at teaching your dog how to do a three to five second stay and work up to a good 30 second stay over that first week. Do everything you can to keep your dog from breaking stay more than one time in a row. This will keep you both focused on success. If you're like most people, you probably have started working on stay while you walk away or with distance a little bit prematurely. Before you get too serious about distance training, make sure that your dog is really staying for a period of time pretty solidly first. This is a key point. Understand that the farther away you and your dog are, the less likely your dog is to listen to you. So distance training does require a pretty serious commitment. Fortunately for us though, teaching your dog to stay while at a distance is one of the easier things to teach with distance. As before, we're gonna go in small steps. Let me show you what I mean. Sit, stay, yes, good job. Okay, come on, nice work. Notice I just took one step back. I didn't walk 10 feet back. I didn't pause for 30 seconds and wait for Bruno over here to break his stay. I set him up for success. This is very, very important if you're interested in making progress in a reasonable amount of time. Sit, stay, yes, good job, nice work. Even though he got up a little bit there, I'm not too worried about that because I can tell that he's trying. Adjust your expectations as to how you define distance. For example, with some young dogs, uh, particularly puppies that are only a few weeks old, you might just need to back away a few inches like this. Stay. Yes, good. Because young dogs are particularly clingy and really want to follow you. Stay. So Bruno's doing a great job here when I take a step or two back. I'm just gonna kind of experiment and see what I can get away with. Look at me, up here. I'm gonna wait till I get his attention before asking him to stay. Hey, up here, stay. That's fine. Yes, good job, good. Stay. Yeah, good job. Uh, 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 uh. And since he's got that habit of kind of popping up there, I think it's an easy enough matter to get him back into a sit, so I'll ask for that. Look at me. Stay. Oh, really good. He's got great eye contact too. Stay. I'm going back a little bit farther this time. Stay. Good. And as you continue to do this, 
avoid being too predictable by just taking three steps back every single time. In other words, mix up your distances. Go over here, stay. Good. Stay, I'm gonna change my angle a little bit. Good. Stay. I'm gonna go real far back now, but I'm gonna hurry up and get back here. I'm not gonna pause at the end of my stay because I wanna make sure that I set him up for success. That was an amazing example. He is just doing stellar right now. Okay, good job. Regardless of what stage of stay you're teaching your dog, it's important to routinely keep those rewards coming to them. Have a decent rate of reinforcement. That means don't just give them one treat for every stay. If they're really succeeding on a long stay while you walk away, it's okay to treat them three or four times during that stay if necessary before releasing them. Bruno is doing even better than I expected him to be doing at this point in this training session. So I think that we can go for some bonus training before we get on to distraction training and teach him how to stay with distance and duration combined. Stay. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, a distraction, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, yes, good job. Oh, that was awesome. I'm gonna give him a really big reward there because that was his first 10 second stay with distance. That's a big deal, guys, that's awesome. Bruno, we have a video to shoot here. You can't chew on the leash. Needless to say, you'll need to teach your dog how to stay in the presence of a minor distraction okay, before expecting them nice to stay work. in the presence of a major distraction like a squirrel. Now we know Bruno will stay for a few seconds at a time here, so we're gonna get him warmed up with that. And now I'm just gonna move this toy a little bit. Yes, good job. I'm gonna reward him. He didn't respond to this moving distraction, but now I'm gonna up the ante a little bit and make it a bit tougher. Stay. Oh no, too much. That was his first broken stay of the day right there. That's because we've been going out of our way to set him up to be successful each time. Yes, good boy. Nice work. Stay. Yes, good job. I'm not even giving him a chance to break. Good job, okay. Bruno, stay. Whoa, two squeaks. I'm not getting up and walking away and pausing for many seconds at a time and also distracting him. I'm staying up close because that's easier for him. So teach each one of these independently before combining them. But I'm feeling pretty good. I'd like to see if we can get lucky and get a glimmer of success with combining duration, distance, and distraction with stay right now. Stay. Are you kidding me? That is unbelievable. I'm gonna go ahead and give yet another big jackpot reward to Bruno for that exceptional behavior there. I mean, this is really not as easy as it looks with many dogs. Don't be discouraged if you don't progress this quickly, but it's all about timing and really finding those tiny moments of success if you really wanna make a lot of gains in a shorter period of time. That's fine. That's fine, I don't mind that he lied down. Again, he's not moving away from me and he's not coming towards me. He's maintaining his general position in space here. Stay. Yes, good job. And I made it even tougher there by dropping the toy and he still maintained his stay. When he gives you those eyes, you reward that. If you don't have your dog's eyes, you do not have your dog. You must be able to get their eyes on cue. It's important to maintain this line of sight here where you can really have good eye contact just to kind of stay in communication with your dog. Plus it's easier to read if they're going to break or if they're uh, thinking about breaking. Okay, good job. If you look into their eyes and you suspect that they're thinking about breaking, that's your cue to get in there and end the stay before they fail. Up here. Yes, good. And see right there, he started to get tempted a little bit more to break, so I wanted to interrupt it, get over here and reward him. Oh! I was trying, I was getting confident there. Distraction training is hard for dogs and requires months of training in a variety of situations and places before your dog will generalize listening to you reliably in the face of heavy distractions. So naturally, you're probably wondering about how to teach your dog and prepare them for more serious distractions like squirrels, dogs, cats, and other things that just exist in the world. I'm gonna have your next two lessons in the description of this video so that you can start making progress on that. I'll have a link in the description that you can visit to make a contribution of any amount you'd like to my Patreon campaign. If you think Bruno did a good job, give him a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and also set up automatic pet food delivery with PetFlow. I'll have all of the details and some videos for you to check out in the description of this video. See you guys next time. Arr.